what ultra processed foods do to your body and why you cannot stop eating them. How come people are buying less sugar, less salt, less oil than ever before. However, diabetes and obesity rates are soaring. It's because people aren't buying these foods directly anymore. However, they are getting them through ultra processed foods that contain more of them and also fewer nutrients. So what are ultra processed foods? I want to make it very clear that not all food processing is bad and just because a food is processed doesn't mean that it's bad for you actually all food processing is not equal for instance if you're freezing veggies or if you are fermenting yogurt those actually make the food better what makes ultra processing different is that it will actually strip the food of its original structure so take away what is good and then add stuff that is not necessarily good to it. The researchers will often use the NOVA classification in order to sort foods into different categories of processing. So in the first category, we have unprocessed foods or minimally processed foods. So you're going to find all your whole foods in there and you're also going to find like frozen fruit or veggies or you're going to find unsweetened yogurt. Then you have your second category, which are going to be your processed culinary ingredients. So these are basically kind of the seasonings like salt and oils and honey, sugar, all of the things that you are going to be adding to the foods in the first category. And those two together will make the third category. And the fourth category are the ultra processed foods with a bunch of additives, with all the healthy parts of the foods that are stripped away. And there's often little resemblance to the original ingredients. And those, those are the foods we want to avoid. Now let's talk about why you can't stop eating ultra processed foods. Because we all know it, if you're going for a bag of chips, you have the intention of only eating a couple, but before you know it, the entire thing is gone. One of the most powerful features about UPFs is their hyper palatability. They combine fat, sugar, salt, all these things in a way that is just so hard to resist. And it's also something that you're not naturally going to find in whole foods. These combinations will just light up your brain's dopamine pathways, reward pathways. And so if you eat a little bit of it, you're going to crave more for that instant gratification. And so you're not listening to your hunger anymore. You're just listening to your cravings. And the more you do it, the harder it gets to resist. Now, another reason why why UPFs are really hard to resist is their texture and their food processing. Most products are designed to be soft, airy, kind of like melt in your mouth. They are very easy to eat, require very minimal chewing, and that's how you can get away with eating really big amounts you're not really realizing and you're not really feeling full because your satiety hormone doesn't quite get the time to kick in because you're eating so much in such a small amount of time because it's just so easy. And this texture thing goes beyond the fact that the foods are ultra processed. It's just that usually it's linked, but there's this one study in the Netherlands where participants were able to eat however much food they liked and they either had the option to have hard textured foods, let's say like potatoes or waffle fries or soft textured foods like mashed potatoes and they overate they ate more when they were eating the soft textured foods another important factor is the caloric density versus satiety because ultra processed foods usually tend to be pretty calorie dense without being that nutrient dense and specifically not very rich in protein or fiber which are two of the more satiating nutrients and so that makes it much easier Easier for you to overeat on these foods and then also usually because UPFs will replace a lot of the key healthy nutrients in whole foods by 
nutrients that are a little less healthy, then you are at risk of nutritional deficiencies if you are mainly getting your nutrients from UPFs. You can still be malnourished even if your energy intake is high. The variety effect is another way that ultra processed foods will keep you hooked because when you are eating a single food that is a whole food, you are going to experience what is called sensory specific satiety. And this means that after a while of eating that same food, you are not going to find that it tastes as good anymore. You're not going to have as much pleasure from it. And therefore that is going to start signaling to your body as well that you are full. But with ultra processed foods, you're actually bypassing this because those foods usually have all different colors and different flavors and different textures and you have all these fun packages and so there's all these things that keeps the variety really high and so you can eat and eat and eat and eat and you're never going to quite feel satiated and i think one really striking example that really shows how much you just can't stop eating these foods is this study this was a randomized control trial where participants were into two groups one of the groups contained ultra processed foods and the other group was minimally processed foods or like whole foods and both of these groups had the same calories the same macros so that's very important the only difference was the level of processing of the foods and then participants were able to eat until they felt full and so in theory you'd think that they would eat the same amount since the macronutrients were the same However, the participants in the group that had the ultra processed foods actually ate 500 calories more every day. And so in a couple weeks, they were gaining weight compared to the group of people who had the minimally processed foods. And the study really shows that there's something in these UPFs that will drive you to overconsume them, and that is not just based on the macronutrient composition. So now let's talk about what ultra processed foods actually do to your body. Because beyond this immediate urge to overeat, which will of course lead to things like obesity and diabetes and other health issues, UPFs also directly change what happens in your body. And one of these effects being the food matrix effect. Now, I actually already made a video on the topic. It's a very old video, but it's still relevant. So if you want, you can go watch it right here or in the description. But the thing with whole foods is that they provide more than just the nutrients. They also have this very complex structure that is going to change the way that they are absorbed in your body. They come with a matrix. So there's fiber, there's water, there's different vitamins and minerals. And that means that once you are eating a whole food, you are not going to assimilate everything immediately. It's going to take time and it's going to be spread out over a longer period. So if you're eating an orange, let's say, it's going to be prepackaged with fiber, water, vitamins, minerals, everything. And after eating one orange, maybe two two oranges you are going to feel full but if you're drinking orange juice let's say the matrix has been completely destroyed and everything is kind of rearranged and so you can drink multiple glasses of orange juice that are the equivalent of maybe like 10 oranges and you're still not going to be full and all that sugar is going to come crashing into your bloodstream right away and you can see why you're not going to have the same impact when you eat an orange than when you drink orange juice the food matrix is not completely understood we don't know exactly what makes it and why certain foods can have the exact same ingredients and just not be not have it be translated in the same way we just know that the way that it is in the whole food is the way that is going to be the more most beneficial to your body another aspect is the hormonal disruption upfs can impact your hormones like i said earlier a lot of them will have a high glycemic index meaning that if you eat them you're going to get a big glucose spike and then you're going to get a big insulin spike in order to make that sugar come into your cells and so now you're satisfied but in a few hours everything is going to drop back down and you're going to have this little crash and you're going to be in need of energy and so you want to eat more and then you start maybe restricting because you know that it's not healthy and you're just in this 
not good cycle. And UPFs can also impact your gut microbiome. These are more recent, recent studies that are just emerging in the human sphere. We have some animal studies that show that certain additives will just mess up the gut microbiome. It can lead to changes in the microbiome that will trigger inflammation and provoke, promote overeating and even increase metabolic disorders. We are not yet fully aware of everything that happens in the gut microbiome and its importance. We are barely starting to touch on that. So I'm sure that we will have a lot more data in the future, but for now, we must err on the side of caution. Now, let's talk about the psychology of ultra processed foods because Beyond biology, there are a bunch of psychological factors that explain why it's so easy to overconsume these foods. And the first aspect is definitely the convenience. Because in our current world that is increasingly fast paced, of course, convenience plays a huge role. And people are not spending the time to make home cooked meals anymore. They would rather just opt for convenience and get a food that requires very little preparation to even like no preparation and also they would like to get a food that they can multitask with meaning they can eat it in the car on the go standing up in between meetings whatever another thing that plays a role are the portion sizes because processed foods come pre-packaged and the packaging is made to make you eat more than what you need so that you will finish it earlier and therefore you will buy more quicker but then you're so used to seeing this packaging and these serving sizes these portions and so it becomes your new normal and that leads us to the marketing power of these foods the packagings are great you want to buy them they're colorful they scream at you there's also ads that you see used to be on tv now i feel like you see it more within social media with content creators and influencers and so all of these products that are ultra processed are constantly getting pushed to you they catch your eye you think about them and then one day you see them at the store and you're like wait why not try many upfs are also tied to emotional conditioning like if you're getting home from work and you had a very stressful day you are not going to try to make yourself feel better with a salad you're gonna get a bag of chips and you're going to enjoy that in front of a movie and let's say you had a nice day today you want to celebrate you're not going to celebrate with an apple you are going to get some ice cream and a cookie and enjoy that and so over time you associate these foods with comfort and they become emotionally charged and so they're the ones that you automatically turn to and the thing with upfs as well is that they will promote mindless eating because again like i said earlier they're very easy to just grab and go and to eat in a few seconds you're not even realizing it you're not fully enjoying you're not fully sitting down and really registering anything that you're eating so now that we all agree that ultra processed foods are not the healthiest thing to eat what can we actually do about it because it's so important that you don't fall into restriction either that would defeat the purpose so what you can do is be aware that's the first step and that's what you're doing by watching this video so that is good just to know because some people have no idea they don't know that there's going to be a difference in health aspects when a food is processed ultra processed or minimally processed or whole so knowing that is a first tool and then once you know that you can also start to pay a little bit more attention to labels on the processed foods that you are buying making sure that the first ingredient which is the primary ingredient isn't like sugar or some type of additive another really good thing to do is to find healthier convenience foods because like we talked about a lot of you will reach for UPS because they are convenient and that's normal. Another thing to do is to try to batch cook a little bit. When you are making a meal, try to double the portion so that you have another portion for another day and that can be a convenient food. You can freeze it if you don't want to eat it right away. You can also try to batch cook some veggies, batch cook some grains and legumes and kind of have them throughout the week. It's also good to focus on the whole foods to add to your diet instead of 
focusing on the processed foods, ultra processed foods that you have to remove, it, it's then it's gonna create restriction and that's not good. But instead, if you're thinking about all the foods you can add, more fruits, more veggies, more legumes, more nuts and seeds, then that's going to bring you to a healthier diet. One way to do that is to learn to pair the foods together. Let's say you're very used to having your cookie for a snack. You can still do that, but maybe instead of having two cookies, you can have one cookie and one piece of fruit. Rebuilding food culture is also good. You want to learn to eat more mindfully at the table with your meal that is in a nice plate, in a nice environment, because the grazing and the mindless eating will definitely get you to overconsume the ultra processed foods. And if you want to learn more about mindful and intuitive eating, I have an entire playlist that you can check out right here or in the description. So by now you probably know that processed foods are not great for your health and that they need to be avoided. But I am going to say this again, processed foods are not the devil. The idea is just to be aware that they can have health consequences and just choose your food accordingly. It's important that you don't start banning all of them or being like very restrictive because your body's not really going to adjust well. If you do that, you're going to get into binge restrict cycles. Instead, follow some of the tips that I talked about at the end. And you can also watch my video on healthy eating for beginners. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it and subscribe and see you on my next one. Bye.